Hi Lisa, thank you for the wonderful energy. Would you please give your thought on whether the ego dissolves itself or the true self dissolves the ego? Why do you think awakening happens? It's always the true self that does everything. The ego is always claiming everything the true self does. It's like, mm, I moved my hand, I uh, blinked, I looked, I spoke, I smelled. It doesn't know how it did that. It's has no idea how it's looking out of its eyes or how it's speaking out of its mouth or hearing these sounds or sitting in this room or being on a globe spinning the sun. It has no idea. But yeah, it's like all down to me, all down to me. I am the doer. Ah, ah, you're not the doer. It's a happening. It's a happening. The problem with me saying that is in one way it can be very relaxing, but in another way, the person's like, what do I do? So on the human level, the human is about survival. So all the human wants to do is survive. But it's, it's got confused with this identification because it's begun to think it's real and it exists. And then it begins to get survival muddled with itself. So its constant question is, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And it's always obsessed with this question. What should I do? What should I do? Where should I go? What should I do? And it, it believes that it's real and it's, it's always getting this seeking muddled up with itself. So our thinking mind was created so that we could improve survival. So I could say to you, I have 10 fish. Would you like to swap that for 10 pieces of wood? And so I could tell you where I've been, or we could communicate in order to make our survival better. Communication wasn't about joy or enjoyment. It was about surviving better. It was about evolution as humans. So our, ang our, 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 anguish, our language is all about um, survival. But the person doesn't think that because it gets so muddled up about what it is. So, so the way that we think is based on production, on how we can produce to make our lives better. But at some point, we begin to believe we're the storyteller. And then our identity gets muddled in with survival, because if we're a good entity, then we can survive better. If we impress others, then we can survive better. If we have the biggest house, then we can convince everybody that we're worth something, and then we can survive better. So our identity gets completely merged with this whole survival mechanism, which isn't wrong as long as there is like a consciousness of what's happening. What happens when you identify with thinking though, is there's a total merging um, with everything that you think. And so you, you have no ability to pull all these things apart and you think you're real and then you begin to tell yourself that you're not trying to survive, you're just trying to be a good person, but you're trying to be a good person in order to survive better in a group. But you begin to get all these stories and try and make this ego based on survival, like I am a good person, I am a handsome person. Even I am a spiritual person is normally about survival, like when you go to all the spiritual events and everyone's wearing their baggy trousers and rags and beards and dreadlocks. It's all about survival. How can you survive well? Am I still online? Yes. Um, and then you project this into an identity that needs to be perfect. Because if you're per perfect, then you can gain um, lots of trust from people. You can um, be popular. Um, you can have lots of friends. And all of this is making you more secure, making you more able to try trade with other humans and making your survival better. But this identity gets fixated on itself and its image. It gets, it gets sucked into like Instagram or Facebook, always publishing photos, thinking that that's it, that's who it is. And it gets so confused because he thinks that's who it is. And if you said to them, yeah, but you're just doing that because you want other people to love you, they'd be like, no, how dare you? I'm doing that because that's who I am. That's who I am. I'm trying to show people who I am. 
that's my passion. Yeah. Me thinks that you thib. But it's got no consciousness of that. Even me telling you this, maybe there's resistance, maybe not from you, but from other people, because nobody likes to see this, that the functioning of the body is simply set up to survive. And everything it comes into contact with is all about its survival, whether it be popular, whether it be loved, whether it be um, rich, whether it be famous, whether it be having a big house with your partner and a swimming pool. All of these things are about survival. Even pleasure activities are about survival. So if you look at a pleasure activity, you'll notice that we're training ourselves or being obsessed with how to survive better. So say TV. What do you think TV and stories are doing? They're telling us stories which train us to respond in better ways. And let me tell you, as a writer myself, what the techniques of the writers, what, what techniques the writers use in order to keep you interested. So normally when you write a play or you write a book or you write a story, what you have to include is struggle of the character. So you set up a character, you can set up a perfect life, and then there comes an arc, we call it in writing, a struggle. And what interests us as a watcher is how that person deals with the struggle. We call this entertainment, watching TV or reading books or, or any of those sorts of things. But actually, when you really analyze it, all we're doing is we're training ourselves how to respond in different ways. So we're listening to other people's stories and we're paying attention to how they deal with that struggle. And that's what interests us, is how they overcome their struggles. That's the setup of all books. Even if I was to write a spiritual book, we would be interested in how they overcome it, which is about survival. Then when you get into non-duality, what you want me to say to you is how you do it. Because that's what the mind is used to. It's all about you and you surviving, but there's no consciousness of that. You don't sit there and go, I am an entity that's interested in survival, and how do I do that? What you tell yourself is, is that there is a problem, you can't get awakened, how do I become awakened? And you really believe that story to be a reality. Where it's not a reality. That's not the way it is. You don't become awakened because you don't exist. You're a story in your imagination. Everything about you is an imagination. The illusory you. Everything about you. Everything about the character, even the, like, the character that comes and goes is an imagination now. What's actually happening is there is spaciousness experiencing itself. And that spaciousness is undefined. You can't find the source of yourself. And you can't find the end of yourself. It just is. It's no thing and everything. And that's miraculous. That's heaven. But there's a person inside it that's so obsessed with itself, trying to get somewhere. So then you're like, so what do I do, Lisa? What do I do? I can tell you things to do on the human level of how to balance your emotional body. Because your emotional body, by the time people get to non-duality, they haven't been through therapy or, or um, some some spiritual practices, normally by the time they get here, they've told themselves so many lies about themselves, about their life, about what they believe, about what they think. They've denied so many emotions and repressed them that their body hurts. And the reason that your body hurts is because you've been lying to yourself. You've not been your authentic self. And what I mean by authentic self is nobody, is, is life simply acting and just acting out life's will, God's will, whatever you call it. So in every moment responding to life as it is, you've been acting out this imagination of yourself and what you think this imagination needs. So you've never been directly acting from the divine, which is free and expansive. You've been acting out from a contraction that is living in an imagination and is cut off from what it actually feels and thinks. So it's in a way, it's always been lying to itself, telling itself porky pies. I'm unhappy because of Joe Bloggs down the road. I'm unhappy because of my work. I'm unhappy because of um, my big foot. I'm unhappy because I don't look like this. I'm unhappy because of this. I'm unhappy because I was traumatized as a child. Blah, 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 blah. You're unhappy because there's an identification with something that's not true. That is the ultimate suffering of humanity. So what? So what? So?
So here you are. Mind's like, what do I do? What do I do? There's something that's watching that that's, in, that's free already. There's something that's appearing in that's free. It's not concerned about what you do or don't do. Yeah, but what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? It's not concerned. It's here. It's present. It's expanded. That's who you are. Thanks, Aaron, for your question. <laughs>